Well, I finally got around to that weekend video. Hey, I need time off too. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of July 21st. Now, you're probably already aware of what we do on this show. Every day, we go hunting for hot OTC and penny stocks. In other words, we're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. Now, when I do my research looking for hot penny stocks, I do not bother with the press releases or the filings. Not initially. I'm more concerned with the charts. I want a hot chart first. So I go looking for charts that have heat in them, whether that be a breakout setup, lots of volume coming in, big bounces, or a surge that just won't quit. When I find a chart that says I'm ready to run, then I go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst to either get the chart moving or to keep it going. Well, I got three of those stocks for us today, like I always do. First ticker we're going to dive on into is Camber Energy. This is ticker CEI. Her chart is hot and blazing. You can see she had over 50% gains today with good cause. She had a filing come out on Friday. This company has been talking for months about a merger deal they have with an OTC company called Viking Energy. When they came out with a filing on Friday, said they're ready to close it. August 1st. We got one week. So ticker CEI, Camber Energy, finished the day at $1.22 with over 53% gains. Now Viking Energy on the OTC market had a good day Friday as well on that filing. She did over 25% gains. Now, personally, I think Camber Energy is the better play. That's just my opinion. And I say that because when this merger is all over, Viking is disappearing off of the OTC market. She is gone. She is merging with this company. The surviving entity will be CEI. So that's why I'm liking Camber better. But you make your own choice on that. So CEI finished the day at $1.22 with over 53% gains. She is a penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange, so you can trade this for free. You can trade it pre-market, after-market hours. So what does this company do? Well, we do have a description here, but I'm going to jump into that most recent filing, and I'm going to use the description here because it is most current. Camber Energy is a growth-oriented, diversified energy company. Through its majority-owned subsidiary, Camber provides custom energy and power solutions to commercial and industrial clients in North America and owns interest in oil and natural gas assets in the United States, Texas. The company's majority-owned subsidiary also owns an exclusive license in Canada to a patented carbon capture system, as well as a fully developed, patented, ready-for-market proprietary medical biohazard waste treatment system using ozone technology. And finally, they also have the rights to a fully developed, patent-pending, ready-for-market proprietary electric transmission distribution open conductor detection system. Of course I know what these are. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't know what any of that technology is, and I'm sure you probably don't either. So if you want to know, I would just dive into Vikings News since it is their technology. Now, since we are here at the filing, let's just jump on into this right now. Camber Energy and Viking Energy announced shareholder approval of merger. The merger is anticipated to close on or about August 1st of this year. And they tell us right here that after the merger, Camber will be the remaining solely publicly traded entity. So that's where I get my information that Viking is falling off of the OTC market. Now they tell us down here that Camber is going to benefit directly and fully from Viking's business activities, including as it relates to Viking's interest in the following. Custom energy and power solutions business. The exclusive license to a patented clean energy and carbon capture system intellectual property rights to a fully developed, patented, ready-for-market proprietary medical and biohazard waste treatment system using ozone technology, as well as a patent-pending, ready-for-market proprietary open conductor detection system. So they're getting everything from Viking, including their revenues. Their revenues are going to be dropping into Cambers as well. So everything Viking is, is coming over to Camber, and it's looking very juicy. So what was the relative volume around Camber today? 
Well, let's see what we got going here. Wow. Whoa. That's a huge jump, folks. Going from 4.3 million to 72 million shares in one day. Share structure for Camber. Well, I am not sure what the float is, but we have a low outstanding share count of only 22.6 million. So we know the float is under that. That's not bad at all. Looking at her financials. Well, it looks like they took one heck of a hit during COVID. 2019, they were at $2.7 million. At the end of 2020, they were down to $397,000. Now, I know this is thousands and that's millions because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these charts. At the end of 2022, they had finally gotten the revenues close to $600,000, getting to keep about $423,000 of that as profit. Quarterly, we're not impressed with that. The last four quarters, she has been dropping each and every one of them, starting at 171,000, dropping down to 93,000, though she did get to keep 50,000 of that as profit. The good news here is, is that they get the revenues from Viking. Viking is on the OTC, the middle tier, the QB. She is at 64 cents right now and had over 25% gains on Friday. But look at those revenues, folks. They're incredible. At the end of 2022, she had over $24 million of revenue. And that was a bad year. Look at the years before. She was doing a lot more. And she got to keep $8.7 million of that. Now, last year, Canberra only did roughly $600,000. This company has done roughly 47 times that much revenue. And now it all belongs to Canberra. That's why I've got my eye on Canberra and not Viking. Taking a look at those disclosures for the company. We've got two of them here. One that came out on Friday. We already looked at that one. It's the one about closing the merger. And then we have an 8K on June 21st. They got a notification from the NASDAQ that they had been under a dollar for too long and they had to get the price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days or they were in trouble. They could get yanked off the major exchange and thrown down to the OTC. But as you can see, they did take care of that. Matter of fact, we've got a news piece here that came out June 21st telling them that they had gotten continued listing compliance. So everything is good there. We don't have any problems. They've already filed the S-4 form, which is why they can close the merger deal. You got to have an S-4 go in. This was a very important piece of news for us, and that came out on the 14th. And then on the 21st Friday, we've got the news press that says the approval is done. The merger is happening and it's going to close most likely August 1st. I'm excited. Let's go take a look at that chart now. Let's take a look now at CEI. And we'll do that on TOS. <laughs> this is Think or Swim. It's a free trading platform you get when you sign up with TD Ameritrade. And that's free too. So we are looking at Camber Energy, ticker CEI. That's a six-month, four-hour view. We've got a really nice high bubble here of $9.66 back in November. But she was bouncing off of a normal area down here closer to six bucks. So this was over 50% run right there and it was very short lived. And since that high, we have been on a very long exaggerated drop down to 60 cents that just happened here in July. Now you can see the 200 was falling very fast and she kind of leveled off right in this area, which would have been a perfect opportunity to attempt a breakout. Well, she had an inclination, that little green bar right there. She got close, but never even touched it. Now, right in this area, you can see we've got a support going on right about there, right in this area here. That is at $1.76. We've got another one down in this lower section right down here. That brings us in at $1.22. Now, after hitting this low bubble down here, she changed trend. We are not in a downtrend anymore. She crushed this 50. When I say crushed, I mean it. She was falling very hard. And with this spike right there, she didn't just level it out. She turned it. It is now climbing and getting stronger. Now, I love these spikes. When she got above this 50-day SMA, she launched herself with what I call directional intentional spikes. She starts at home with a big bar and then puts a very long wick and just pierces that 200-day SMA. Psh, breaks the ice. Still too steep to get up on top of, but she's got to break the ice. This shows me intention. I want to get up on top of there. So I'm expecting the first opportunity she gets when it levels off, she's going to take off. 
Well, normally I only look for one. Well, we got two of them here. So I am eyeballing this thing. She fell back down to the 20 day SMA, not the 50, rode on that. You can see she was hugging that, biding time, waiting for this 200 day SMA to get close. And catalyst or not, I believe she was ready to bounce anyways. But timing being as it was, she got a news press and a filing about this merger closing. She took off from 82 cents up to $1.28, crushing that 200 day SMA and pulling back just a little bit after market hours. Volume was very strong today, right? We went from 4 million to 72 million. And I am highly anticipating the volume to be strong for the next week until August 1st. Yes, I do. Osculators, they're on fire. Our RSI is clear up here at 80 right now. And our MACD, our PPO are pushing to the moon. That's what we want. And the ADX is following trend. Look, if all of your oscillators are pushing up, there's nothing wrong in that picture. That looks sweet. Let's come on down to our 20 day, one hour view. Look at our 200, just like the 50 on the four hour. She was coming down strong. This huge jump here didn't just level off the 200, it turned it. Literally turned it and it too is getting stronger. Had that big strong bounce right there. She has fallen back a little bit, but still on top of her nine day SMA. Now she is rocketing. I would be leery that she would pull back maybe to the 20, the next SMA. However, she's got so much volatility, so much volume right now. It's hard to tell when this rocket's going to quit climbing. Osculators, they are still hot. PPO and MACD, both similar to each other. They're pushing up, but they've had just a little bit of cool off because of the aftermarket activity. And our RSI is down to 62, which isn't cold by any means. Five day, five minute. So you can see how calm she was here. Just li little dribbles moving around, bounced off this low bubble. Didn't really bounce, did she? She almost came right back down to it, very close. And then she took off crushing that 200 and the volatility is now in the picture. These two look like completely different stocks. This is what I'm expecting for the next week. This is a big deal. This company is gonna get 48 times her normal revenue. They're gonna go from 500,000 to 25 million. Folks, that is humongous. They have got patented technology that's ready for the market. Three different things that I can't <laughs> explain to you. Go over to Viking News and read. This is in seven days, folks. This is a wave we can see coming from the horizon. Get your surfboards ready, folks. CEI. Let's hang 10, dude. The next stock I really want to share with you comes from the OTC market. This is ticker ACBD, Anabadial Corporation. Now, of course, I found her by looking at the charts, but her chart isn't anything spectacular. It is breaking out, it is growing, it is on an uptrend, but it hasn't had a lot of activity, which really isn't surprising. When I came over here looking for what has got her moving, first thing I realized is she hasn't had a press release or a filing in over four years. No new information. Then on July 19th, they brought out a filing and a press release about a merger deal they're doing with an AI development company. Looks like they are AI dedicated. And this I consider an early entry opportunity. AI is a hot brand new sector. We can't even measure the potential of this because we don't know all that AI can do yet. So I'm thinking this could be a ground floor opportunity. ACBD, Anabadial finished the day at $1.50 with over 27% gains today. Now her problem is she's on the pink limited tier. This isn't a good thing. This means she is late on one or more of her financial filings. And if they don't get them caught up in time, they risk being yanked off of the OTC and thrown down to the expert market. Now the expert market isn't a delisting. It's more like a uh, timeout, a penalty box. They get thrown into the expert market, their shares cannot be bought or sold, and they stay there until they get their financials caught up. When they do, then they can come out and play with the other stocks like they used to. Now the company does have a verified profile and a transfer agent, so they look good in that regard, but they tell us they're a shell risk. Now a shell risk means she's in business. She's doing something and she's supposed to be making revenues, but she's not. Well, this is a little weird because they have money on the books. 
it's not a lot, but they do have some there. Now, what it is they're doing, honestly, I don't know. I don't see a whole lot of information and I'm not going to read news from four years ago. So I don't know what she's doing, but I know where she's heading and that's got me excited. So they tell us here that the company is basically a holdings company. They are setting out to acquire emerging companies in key industries where revenue growth and market share penetration are posed for significant gains. I think they've got a right ticket with this AI merger. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, they aren't big numbers, but it is a 500% increase in volume. She's normally doing less than 2,000 shares a day. Today, she did about 10,600 shares. Yeah, not big numbers, but definitely more interest. Share structure. God, I wish I had done more research on this. I didn't. This is very curious. They tell us that the outstanding share count is just about 40 million. And the insiders, the management, the hedge funds, the institutions, if they have any, own 39.7 million of that 39.9 million. Well, that leaves us with less than a quarter million shares in the float. What? Is that possible? I think it is. I don't think the OTC has any minimum requirements like the NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange. So we could have, well, not a super duper low float, a itty bitty minuscule float. And can you imagine when this stock gets some volume, what a float like this could do? Look out, Red Bull. We are going to the moon. Financials for the company. Well, I told you they have some on the books, just not a lot. No, more than a dollar. Remember, you got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these boards. So they had $1,000 at the end of 2022. I don't know how they made it, but they didn't have to pay anything for it. Maybe consultation. I really don't know. Quarterly. Well, 10 times the revenue. Look, they went from 1000 to 10000 That's a 1,000% increase. I know. It's not worthy of getting excited about. So this news is a big deal. Looking at her disclosures. All right, before we look at the disclosures, you can see there's nothing down there since 2008, but we need to take concern with the financials because she is pink limited. She's laid on one or more of them. So let's see which one she's laid on. This column over here is the date they filed. This column here is the date they filed for. Now I can see 2021, 2022, six, six and then nine, you've got 12, for 2023. And th this, this is about the merger. Okay, it's there. Three, six, nine, twelve. Everything's there for 2022, including the annual. All right, I see what's missing here. The annual report. Every annual report has to have an attorney letter. This attorney letter is not for this one. So they need to get an attorney letter out, and then this pink limited will turn to pink current. And that in itself can be a catalyst. So she is all caught up on her financials. She just needs that attorney letter. Now we've got a disclosure here. Anna Badayo has entered into a merger agreement with Digital Research Solutions, Inc. Well, they also brought that out in a press release. As I said, this was on July 19th. Anna Badayo is pleased to announce that the company has entered into an agreement and plan of merger with Digital Research Solutions. This transaction will result with DRSI becoming a subsidiary of Anabadio. DRSI was incorporated in 2015 and is an innovative programming AI software technology development and advisory company. They sound like they are dedicated to it for business purposes to help other businesses. Kelly Kirchhoff, the CEO of DRSI, stated, We are excited about this opportunity with ACBD. We are involved in several inspiring AI-related technology and advisory opportunities right now. And while technology is stronger than ever, we look forward to entering the rapidly growing tech market. This is exactly the type of situation that we have been looking for. Now, I really wanted to know more about this company, so I dove over into Google and found they have a website. It's a pretty neat website. I love their picture here. That is awesome right there. Get rid of this for us. No thanks. Now they break down some of the stuff that they do here. We're just gonna touch on to this. They've got four things that they seem to be doing. Document summarizing solutions. Haven't heard of any AIs doing this one yet. Our document summarizing solution 
is an artificial intelligence software technology data extraction process that works with all types of structured and unstructured content, from documents such as, but l not limited to, PDFs, Word documents, media resources, and other formats. Well, people have a lot of information in documents. If you can get AI to work with that information, heck, maybe I can have them do my videos for me. Another area they're working with is telecom. Telecom is a huge industry, very competitive, and that's what they think the AI can help with, fighting that competition, finding ways to undermine your competitors. They are also working with blockchain. Blockchain is huge and growing. I'm not quite sure how they're going to work with it. And they're using AI to help advise on mergers and acquisitions. This is all new. This is all hot. And we have no way of knowing how big this can get. But they're just making the deal right now. So this would be a good ground floor opportunity. Do your own due diligence. You might find out something I don't know. But to me, it looks good. Let's go take a look at that chart now. It's a simple chart, very easy to read. This is ACBD, Anabadio Corp. That's a six month, four hour view. Our low was 60 cents in February. Our high was just the other day at $1.88. Now there was nothing to talk about back here. Nothing was happening until the news came out on the 19th. Then on the 20th, she jumped from about 72 cents up to $1.88. That is over 150% gains right there. She fell back down to just over a buck and then popped to $1.50. Lots of volatility. She is climbing. She is on top of her nine-day SMA. Volume was very strong the other day, about 50,000 shares. We had a good strong day today, relatively speaking. Oscillators are very strong. Literally going to the moon. PPO, MACD are climbing strong. RSI is clear up at 66.6. .6. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Now, this goes back to June 30th. The next trading day was July 7th. So, we've got about seven days of no trading there. And then, two weeks of no trading. From July 7th until the news came out on the 19th. On the 20th, she took off. When she fell, she fell back to her nine-day SMA. And she's sitting there very securely. Now, she's pushed off that nine-day and she's climbing with each bar having a higher low than the one before. That's what we want to see. Oscillators are growing. Strength is coming into the picture. Everything looks warm. Five day, five minute. We've got some volatility in there, don't we? She jumped from a low of 88 cents to $1.88. Back down here to $1.20. Back and forth, back and forth. And now she has broke over her 20, which is the strongest SMA on the board. It just came into the picture. She has pushed up over that with three bars with higher lows on each bar. This is a nice setup. I'm not saying she's screaming. She's not a blazing, rip-roaring fire, but she has got heat and she's got a hot catalyst. And this could very well be an early entry into the AI sector. But do your own due diligence. I'm liking her. I really like you guys a lot. So I'm going to quit wasting all the due diligence I do and give you even more. Real quick, what I've got here are eight hot charts. When I'm doing my research looking for stocks to talk to you about, I see a lot of charts, but I can't talk to you about them all. But why waste them, right? So I got eight hot charts here, charts with heat, charts that look like they're ready to run. What I don't have is any information on them. I've done the first part of the due diligence. I found the charts with heat. You do the second part. Go check out their filings and their news presses. See if you can find a match to set these things on fire. All we need is a little catalyst with a hot chart and these things can burn. Last stock we're taking a look at is an old friend of ours. We've looked at it twice before. This is Dragonfly Energy Holdings Corporation, ticker DFLI, DEFFLY. Now the last time we looked at it was June 5th. And she took a hard fall since we looked at it. But she's had a lot go on since we looked at her. God, the amount of news that has come out since June 5th is just amazing. And the chart's taken a turn. She is in the midst of an atypical breakout right now. It looks sweet. And that's why we're talking about it again. Now, if you remember what this company does, they make lithium-ion batteries. But not for electric vehicles. 
These are your regular batteries that you put in cars, trucks, RVs, anything, except they're not made with acid and lead, they're made with lithium ion. Now they're also making power banks for individuals at their homes or their businesses. This is a place where you can store power for when you need it. But they take all these power banks and they hook them together in a microgrid, which is connected to the local electric company. And they all work synergistically together. And I think this is gonna be huge for the future. I think it's great for a short hold. I think it's good for a long hold still. DFLI, she finished today at $2.49 with about 18.5% gains. She is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. We like the penny stocks on the major exchanges. You don't have to pay to trade them. You can trade them pre-market and aftermarket where there's a lot of activity. So what was the relative volume around the company today? A little bit of an increase. We jumped from 4.5 million to just over 7 million shares. Share structure for DefFly. I don't know what the float is, but our outstanding share count isn't too bad. We're at 45.8 million, and the float is never more than the outstanding share count. Financials for DefFly. 2021, she did 78 million. 2022, she did 86 million. Looking at her quarterly, well, what the heck's going on there? I honestly don't know why we don't have any quarterly revenues listed here. At the beginning of 2022, a year ago, we were basically doing the same amount we're doing now, just a little over $18 million. Let's take a look at her balance sheet, see if we can get some more insight here. Cash and cash equivalents. Now, we got to add three zeros to any of these numbers, too. So at the end of 2022, they had about $17.5 million in the bank. Not bad. Total assets is $88 million. Total liabilities is 77. So they're up about 10 million and 17 million of it is in the bank. Interesting. Checking out the company's disclosures. We haven't got anything here for a month. So let's just dive on into that news. We've got lots of news all the way back to June 5th when we looked at it. But I've only scrolled back here to June 27th. The reason, well, there's a lot of news. We really can't cover it all. But it's really twofold. Safe to say a lot of the news is like this. Dragonfly Energy's Battleborne Battery Standard Equipment on Select ATC RVs, Recreational Vehicles. They already have some contracts. They have got Thor. They have got uh, Streamline with a company that is owning over 50% of the RV business in the world. And they just made another deal with New Camp. So business is growing. But what's really exciting is the headway they're making with their patents. Lots of news on that. And I'm just going to pick up on that right here. At the beginning of July, the company had been granted a U.S. patent for its non-flammable life PO4 storage batteries. July 13th, Dragonfly Energy granted U.S. patent for innovative battery pack assembly design tailored for custom installs helping drive industry innovation and achieve U.S. battery supply independence, Dragonfly Energy to receive another patent for innovative deep cycle battery design. And last, Dragonfly Energy completes U.S. lithium battery cell pilot line, begins manufacturing a node at scale using patented dry disposition process. Folks, you need your patents to protect your technology. That's what makes you your money, so no one else can do what you're doing. And this company is gaining a lot of momentum, and the charts show it. I am loving these charts. I liked this stock when I showed it to you back before she dropped. I said she would be a good short hold. She is, but I think she's going to be an excellent, excellent long hold. Let's go take a look at that chart. That is a busy, busy chart. This is DFLI, Dragonfly Energy Holdings. That's a six-month, four-hour chart, and it's congested. Folks, people are trading every day on this, and she's doing a little bit of everything. You could study this one chart, learning all sorts of aspects of charting. We've got a high here back at the end of December of $28.75. A huge fall to a low at the end of June of $1.38. Now, we have looked at this twice. We looked at it, it appears to be on the 31st of March and June 5th. 
When we looked at it here, we had a nice run afterwards. That was about eight days. We saw it at about $2.80, and she went to $9.75. Woo! Then we looked at it on June 5th. She was down here at roughly $2.72. She had a spike five days later of $4.37. Not bad. Then here, we had a big fall, and the company did it to themselves. They had a public offering, but this is an overkill. They added an extra 10 million shares to the OS. So we went from like 42 to 52. That's like a 20% dilution. Now there is another 10 million in warrants which can be traded in for shares down the road. So that's a later dilution. But right now, there was a 20% dilution. So you could expect the stock to adjust 20%. Well, she was up here at about $2.80. 20% would be uh, 56 cents. That would be 20%. No, that's not what we got. She fell from 280 basically down to 140. 50% overkill so there was value sitting there they sold off more than they should have 30 percent more so coming up from there there was some gains just to be taken for free well, you can see people understood that we started getting bounces here she was flat for a long time the shares were selling close that off they got 20 million dollars in the bank now that's how they have more money in the bank than they have in assets we had a nice jump here showing that she came back down onto the 50, but look at our 50, starting to turn up, about ready to cross that 200-day SMA. That's called a golden cross, one of the strongest technicals on the charts. So this is a power sign about ready to happen. She has been climbing nice and easily. No surging here, just crossing that 200 like it's her business. Now she's getting strength. Look at how big these price bars are getting. And she's sitting up there. She is not trying to come down. All of our SMAs are spread nicely and evenly and all turning up at an even keel. That looks sweet. And look at our oscillators. PPO pushing up, MACD pushing up, RSI is up at 82. And our volume has been strong the last 8, 10 days here. Everything is looking good, on track. Looking at our 20-day, 1-hour view. Accumulation, that's what you call that. People are buying shares and selling shares, buying shares and selling shares. People are accumulating them at a good price because this was overkill. It fell way, way too low. So as soon as this started climbing, people were already in value right here. It wasn't up until about here she should have been even to her dilution right there, which is where she went sideways right on top of this line. You can see everybody knew the true value here. Once she got there, now we've had a change of trend in power. Look, this is nice, even, steady growth. This last day was not. We hit that target point of value, and now people see more value in the company. Why? Maybe all those patents? Maybe. New contracts? Maybe. She is flying. Only one red bar in this whole league here. Osculators, they're looking sweet. PPO pushing up. MACD pushing up. RSI is still in the overbought at 78. I know that scares a lot of people. They think overbought means it's going to come down. Well, yeah, sooner or later, but it doesn't have to come down for a while. She's been up there for a while and she's still looking strong. All of our SMAs are sweet as candy apple pie. I'm loving it. Down to our five day, five minute. Best chart you could ask for right there, literally. You've got a low bubble in this corner, $1.71. You got a high bubble in this corner, $2.53. She's on top of the 200, respecting it, climbing. She moves up to her 50, back down to the 200, and now she gets excited and picks up momentum. What more can you ask for? Climbing steadily above the 200, above the 50, and now launching. I am loving DFLI, folks. I still like her for a short hold. Every time we look at it, she has gains in the next five to eight days. Come on, give me a break. And I like her for a long hold. You can see the potential of this company with where our world is going, right? DFLI, look at it again. I don't think anybody could argue with me. All three of those are hot stocks. CEI, merging with Viking, closing August 1st. 
taking their revenues from a half a million to 25 million. They have got patented technology ready to go to market once they get this merger done. Then you've got the new AI company, ACBD. We don't know a lot about them. This is a wild card play. Do some more due diligence, but we've got to find an AI company, folks, because seriously, this is going to launch so quick. They have just come onto the scene here this year, and they have got their fingers into everything. And when you can find an AI-dedicated company like Netflix was to streaming video, you could be catching a monster before it's growing up. And Deathfly, I like that company because it's solid. This is filling a niche we're all living in. They are creating lithium ion batteries for vehicles we're using already they are creating power banks micro grids i like this company they're making revenues making new contracts and they've got lots of patents all three of these companies are hot and the charts are hot too but do your own due diligence sell yourself remember the more you know the more you're gonna grow see you folks